So we'll begin with preparation of aldehyde. Now there are certain reactions that we have studied already in the chapter hydrocarbon. So we'll start with those reactions so that there can be a quick recapitulation and then we'll begin with new reactions. So one of the important common reaction that we have studied already as a reaction of alkene and alkyne is ozonolysis. Now ozonolysis previously in the chapter of hydrocarbon we studied that reaction this ozonolysis as reaction of alkene. Now this will be here a method of preparation of aldehyde. Now if you haven't studied this ozonolysis reaction this is very important reaction and you must go back and study that reaction and come again. If you have studied this reaction and you could not remember it it's equally bad you should again go back and study that. If you have some vague idea then you should continue listening because I'll quickly recapitulate what this reaction is but I'll not go into the depth of the mechanism or I'm not going to give you any much of the practice here because it has been taught separately in great detail so there's no requirement of repetition but nevertheless the reaction of ozonolysis if it is carried on alkene it is carried on alkene and alkyne both if it is carried on alkene as we studied before we will take ozone and zinc zinc meaning there is a reductive ozonolysis if we don't take zinc that aldehyde will be oxidized and will become carboxylic acid. We have studied all these things. Now the reaction happens like this, you break this alkene into two parts, provide C double bond O to each of the carbon that was involved in al making of alkene. So each of the carbon that was making C double bond C previously will now make C double bond O. So this carbon was making C double bond C, so, so this carbon I have given C double bond O. Similarly on the other side, this carbon will also get a C double bond O like this. Now depending on, upon alkene this can be aldehyde this can be ketone. Now in this case in the kind of alkene I have taken this is an aldehyde. In other cases it could be ketone. No big deal. So depending upon alkene what alkene is you will get either aldehyde or ketone. For example, in this case, if you break on this side, from left hand side, you are going to get a ketone because you can see R group on both sides of this carbon. So on the left hand side, from the left hand part of this molecule, what's going to come out is this. Now you have to quickly recognize that this is ketone because a minute back we have seen that if you have R group on both sides of C double bond O, that is a ketone. You have a R group. When this R, we don't know what this R is. This could be methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, exide, whatever. This side you have methyl. So nevertheless, there are alkyl groups on both sides. So this is a ketone. On from right hand part of this molecule, we are going to get a aldehyde because we can see there's a hydrogen on this carbon. So the molecule is going to look like this. On one side you have R, on the other side you have H, you have H on at least one side. So this is an aldehyde, this is a ketone. So depending upon alkene, you can get an aldehyde, you can get a ketone. So it's not a method of preparation as such because to prepare a particular kind of uh, aldehyde, you have to be very specific with the alkene that you're going to start with. But al aldehydes can be prepared by this reaction and this reaction we have already seen. So this is reaction number one for this chapter, ozonolysis. So we have seen this reaction, so we are not going to practice any problem here. Practice was done, this was recapitulation. So ozonolysis reaction can give you aldehyde depending upon the structure of leukine. Another reaction that we have seen before and we will quickly recapitulate bef before we move to study new reaction would be hydroboration. Now hydroboration if you remember if we carry out hydroboration on terminal alkyne 
Suppose this is my alkyne, I have propyne and I'm carrying out hydroboration, oxidation. So hydroboration, oxidation have this reaction. We do H6 in basic medium and we take hydrogen peroxide. Now when this happens, then if you remember, hydroboration reaction we studied as a reaction of alkene and alkyne. So I'm going to quickly recapitulate what happens. This boron has an empty p orbital and this electron of this alkyne will go into the empty p orbital of boron. The hydrogen from boron comes in the form of hydride and attacks the other carbon because the carbon, the terminal carbon will be providing electron into the empty orbital of boron. Now B2H6 during reaction breaks in the form of BS3. So BS3 goes into the reaction. So these electrons will go into the empty orbital of boron. Now this carbon, terminal carbon will start to make a bond with boron. So boron will start to gain negative charge. That negative charge can be can be removed from BS3 if H- comes out. So boron will make one bond with carbon and break one bond with hydrogen and that hydrogen will come out as H- and that H- will attack this carbon because this carbon is going to gain positive charge because the carbon, the electron of this carbon is moving away from this carbon and getting into the orbital of this carbon and this boron. So this carbon is going to get rid of, is, is going to be devoid of its electron. So in the next step what happens is the hydride coming out of this BS3 attacking this carbon. So this carbon is going to form a bond with hydrogen. One bond is going to break between these two carbons and electron of that bond is going to come between this carbon, terminal carbon and boron. So two bond remains now and terminal carbon is going to form a bond with boron and boron gets rid of one hydrogen that comes here to attack this carbon and forms a bond like this, right? So this process will repeat one more time. So when this bond will also break and again this hydride will come out and at the end of the reaction as we have seen this mechanism so I'm not showing all the steps but at the end what happens this hydride, this hydrogen peroxide comes and this, this boron comes out as BOH whole thrice, right? And there's an OH group attached to this carbon like this, right? Now, if you know tautomerism and you should know tautomerism because we have studied it long back, this is an enol form. There's an alkene and there's alcohol. So, in this enol will tautomerize very quickly to give us keto form. And that keto form will look like this. The carbon that is having OH will continue to have oxygen. The, this carbon oxygen bond will continue to be at the same position. So terminal carbon is making a bond with oxygen. In the keto form also terminal carbon will make a bond with oxygen and that terminal carbon will have a hydrogen because there is no carbon on the other side. And that's why that is terminal carbon. So that is going to give us a aldehyde. So if you have a terminal alkyne, we're going to get a aldehyde as a product of hydroboration oxidation. So these two reaction, ozonolysis and hydroboration oxidation, we have seen before. So I didn't go into details. I hope that's fine with you. Right? So these two reaction were a quick recapitulation. And these two reactions can be used to prepare aldehyde.